It's time for Recipe of the Day. Happy Valentine's Day. If you want to make something pink and special to celebrate Valentine's Day, I've got an easy creamy salmon pasta recipe for you. This is like fancy enough for a date night if you want it to be because you can use beautiful fresh salmon from the fishmonger from the grocery store in this, but it's also really delicious if you use canned salmon. I'm going to tell you how to swap out the canned salmon for the fresh salmon, but that makes this like a great recipe to have in your back pocket. You can make it special with that fresh salmon, nice flakes of it throughout the pasta, or you know how to make it in a pinch when you don't have anything to make dinner with, but you've got some canned salmon in the pantry, you can do this. So it's a very, very versatile, delicious dinner. This is the one I've told you, my daughter, Jamie, she had this after Jennifer and I made it for the photography session. There was a lot of it in the fridge because we did multiple tests that of course we did both the fresh and the canned versions. So there was a lot of it and we had it for dinner that night and then the next night she wanted it again and then the next night she wanted it again. So it really is that good. You're going to love this one. So I'm going to explain how to make this with the fresh salmon first and then I'll tell you what to do with the canned salmon after and it will make a lot of sense at that point. So you're going to get your pasta going. So bring a big pot of water up to boil and then salt it, and then you're adding 12 ounces of linguine noodles or spaghetti. I like something long for this pasta. I don't know why it's creamy, so it makes me think of like Alfredo, fettuccine, linguine, that kind of thing, right? So you want 12 ounces of that in there, and you're cooking it as long as you'd like, according to the package directions, al dente or softer, whatever your preference is. Then you are draining that and putting it back into the pot it cooked in with the lid on. I'm just going to tell you the one thing that I always say. My pots have a very like thick bottom to them and they hold the heat for a really long time. So when I drain the pasta, if I put it straight back into the pot, it will sometimes start to almost burn or really stick to the pot. So what I do is drain the pasta into a strainer and then I just take some cool tap water and swish it around in the pot for a second. That drops the temperature down just that little bit so that it's not going to dry out or burn those noodles. Then the noodles go back into that pot with the lid on. And I like putting them back into that pot because it does keep them warm. But also when I'm making pasta, I usually add the sauce to the pasta in that pot because it's easier to stir that than to add the pasta into the saucepan or skillet that I'm making the sauce in, if that makes sense. So you're getting your noodles ready. While that is all happening behind the scenes, you're going to be making the sauce. So as soon as you start that water boiling for those noodles, that is when you start making the sauce that's going to go on the noodles. Now for this recipe, we are are poaching the salmon. And this is because when I was doing the research for this recipe, a lot of the salmon pasta recipes that I saw have you either bake or pan fry the salmon and then make the pasta sauce on the stove. And it just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Certainly baking the salmon, turning the oven on when you're going to be doing something on the stove later didn't make sense. But also, I feel like if we poach the salmon, then the liquid that we poach it in gets all that salmon-y flavor, and then we can use that as the base of the sauce, almost like having some homemade salmon stock, right? And so that is what I wanted to do. I wanted to really get all the flavor of the salmon right into the sauce in that way. So you're going to get a pot that is just big enough for your salmon to fit in it in a single layer. So we want one pound of salmon with or without the skin. We'll be taking the skin off later, but it doesn't matter if it's on there now. And you can use Atlantic or Pacific, including Alaskan salmon, whatever kind of fresh salmon looks good at the grocery store. You can also use frozen salmon. I will tell you what to do about that in a moment. So you want your salmon, your one pound of salmon to fit in the saucepan in one layer. You might have to cut it into pieces to make that happen. And the size of the saucepan is important here because in a moment we're going to be adding one cup of water to that. And that is the amount that we want for our sauce later. And so if you use a bigger pan and then need more water to like reach halfway up the salmon, it's going to be too much liquid and you're going to be diluting the flavor that we want. You're going to have to throw out some 
some of that water later. So trust me here, you want the saucepan to be the right size for your one pound of salmon to fit in there in a single layer. And then don't put the salmon in there yet. We just are testing that for the size. You put one cup of water into there along with some lemon wedges. So you get a lemon, cut it into eight wedges, keep four of them for later for serving and like a garnish, people can squeeze lemon over top. The other four are going into the saucepan with the water along with a quarter cup of chopped fresh dill or two tablespoons of dried dill, two cloves of garlic minced and a half teaspoon of salt. And then you're going to heat that to a boil over high heat and then reduce it down to low. Add in your salmon in that single layer we talked about, cover the saucepan and you're cooking it until the salmon is opaque and flaky throughout. That is about six to eight minutes. If you are concerned about the temperature of the salmon, the recommended temperature that is safe for salmon is 145 degrees Fahrenheit on an instant read thermometer in the middle, or just cut into some and make sure that it's nice and flaky throughout. Now, if you were using frozen salmon, you absolutely can use frozen salmon fillets or steaks. They are going in there, same thing, single layer, but you're just going to cook them for longer. It just is like uh, 10 to 12 minutes probably, and that will thaw it and then it will cook it until it is flaky and opaque. Wonderful, right? Okay, once that salmon is cooked, you transfer it from the liquid to a plate and then cover the salmon with some foil just to keep it warm. Then head back to that saucepan, take those lemon wedges out of there and throw those out. And then to what is left in the saucepan, like right now you've got some water that is like salmon flavored. It's got a little dill in there, some garlic, all of that in there, right? You are adding, this is where the good stuff comes in, a half cup of sour cream and a half cup of cream cheese a half cup of cream cheese is four ounces, like half of a standard package of cream cheese. You're also adding a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Then you stir that over low heat just until it's all melted together. The cream cheese and the sour cream are going to melt and then continue to cook it occasionally just to simmer off a little bit of the liquid, maybe five minutes or so. It's going to thicken a little bit up and you're going to taste that and add a little more salt if you'd like. Then you take that saucepan off the heat and you go to your pasta pot, take the lid off of the pasta pot. It should be nice and steaming in there. It should have just finished cooking quite recently. If you started it boiling, the water boiling, and started making the sauce, cooking the salmon and everything right at the same time, the pasta probably just got drained very recently. And so you're going to take the lid off of there. It doesn't have water in there anymore, right? And you scrape your sauce into there, all that sour cream, cream cheese, dill, lemon goodness into there, along with another quarter cup of fresh dill. Don't add dry dill. Here we added some at the beginning and it had time to like bloom and plump up. It won't if you add it here. So we added all the dry dill that we were going to add earlier if you only have dry dill. If you have fresh dill, you're adding another quarter cup now because it's just so nice and fresh and bright added at the end. You're also adding in two tablespoons of capers and you stir that to combine. I use like some tongs and really toss it all around. Then you can divide that among plates and flake your salmon into chunks over top or You can alternatively flake the salmon straight into the pot. I just find that as you stir it, it like breaks up a lot more and it's harder to like evenly distribute it among the servings if I do that. So I like to divide the pasta among the serving plates and then flake the salmon into chunks over top, removing and discarding any skin as you go. And then you serve with those lemon wedges on the side and dig in. It is fancy and lovely and so easy. I promised you though, how do you make this with canned salmon? So canned salmon, of course, is fully cooked. So we're not going to be poaching that first, but it does have liquid in the can. And so we're not going to drain that. We're going to actually put the whole can of salmon into the sauce when we do it with that liquid. And it's using two five ounce cans of salmon. I am partial to the red sockeye salmon. I find it actually delicious, but any kind of canned salmon will do. But yeah, so we're skipping the poaching step. And so we're going to need some water. And when you cook your linguine, spaghetti, whatever pasta you're cooking, right before you drain it, scoop out a cup of that pasta water. And then that's going to be sort of the replacement for 
our water that we use to poach the salmon with. You see what I mean? So you're cooking your pasta. You are remembering to scoop out some water before you drain it. You know, my tip for that is to put the colander in the sink and put a measuring cup in the colander. And then when you get your pot and you're about to pour it into the colander, you're going to pour all that water down the drain. You see the measuring cup there and you stop in your tracks. You put the pot back on the stove. You get the measuring cup. You scoop out the water and then you drain the pasta. So whenever you come across a recipe that says that you're going to be reserving a cup of the water, put the measuring cup into the colander right away, right at that point, and then you will not forget because that is the worst. It's happened to me so many times. I'm just like spilling that pot down the drain and going, oh no, I was supposed to. Okay, you know what I mean, right? Okay, so your pasta is cooking and you have a colander in the sink with a measuring cup in it. While that is happening, you're getting out a saucepan and to it, you're adding a half a cup of sour cream and a half cup of cream cheese. Set that over medium low heat and stir it often until it has melted and is nice and smooth and combined. And then to that, you are adding a half cup of chopped fresh dill. You can add two tablespoons of dry dill if that's what you have instead. And you are also adding some lemon wedges, but not as much this time because it's going to be too intense. So you're actually going to start with half a lemon, cut it into six wedges, keep four of them to the side for serving later, and put two of them into this mixture, along with two cloves of garlic minced, a half teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Stir that all in there and then add the full two cans of salmon. It's five ounce cans that you're using and you're not draining the first. So just open the cans and tip them in there. You can remove the bones if you'd like. I don't bother because I like them. They have calcium or something. I've always eaten them. But whatever you're going to do, dump the cans into there and then kind of flake it into the sauce. It's going to be more dispersed and flakier than the fresh salmon, right? It's going to be like right through the sauce. Okay, you simmer that for a moment and then take out those lemon wedges, toss them away and pour your sauce over the cooked pasta. Add in two tablespoons of capers as well. Stir it and then if the sauce is too thick, you're drizzling in a little bit of that pasta water, two tablespoons at a time until it is just right for you. Divide among plates and serve with those remaining lemon wedges. So you see, it's almost the same recipe, same ingredients. The difference is just that you don't have to cook the salmon first and you're just adding the canned salmon straight to the sauce essentially, right? Okay, I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. I hope you eat something delicious today to celebrate Valentine's Day. If you are looking for ideas, don't forget to listen to my Saturday episode when I talked with Jenny Field from Pastry Chef Online. She had a wonderful idea for these sticky sweet buns that get heart-shaped. They're really cool. Go right now and listen to that episode if you need an idea. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all-new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day, happy Valentine's Day. Let's get cooking. <music> 